All right, step five is refining. So I have the bulk of my skin on there, minus the ear, I still have to do the ear. So if you haven't started skin tone yet, skin, skin tone would be not the eye area, not the nose, not the mouth. I know that looks weird right now. But yes, the ear, most the skin. If you're feeling hesitant, start in the neck. It includes your hands or arms as well if those are in your photograph. All right, so then once you have your base skin tone on there, you're ready to refine. So you're going to add another layer to the dark values. And we're going to refine medium, so we're going to do a lot of comparing. It says compare the value on your drawing or on yourself to the value in the photograph. Sorry, that's a tiny little spot. Okay, so we're going to look for small variations in value. And we're going to adjust, and part of that is going to be using the kneaded eraser. So we're going to erase out areas with a kneaded eraser. And remember, that's up front, and there's one for your table number and seat number. So before you come up and get one, one of these little gray erasers, you would look at what table number do I sit at and what is my seat number. And so you would use this to kind of pull away and erase out some highlights or subtle light values. <coughs> so if you're not quite sure what you should be shading, number eight lists what your skin tone entails. All right. So I'm going to have my picture handy. And I'm going to double check, like, I feel like his jawline is kind of starting to disappear a little bit. Um, but I don't think it's going to get that much darker. I just need to adjust my values. So looking at his jawline, I'm looking at, okay, do I have a darker area right underneath the jawline? And I have a separation of value. And I want to smudge if I have an outline. Then I want to check and make sure that this area is much darker than the chin right here. But the bottom of the chin is much darker, kind of fading up. So I'm checking like little areas at a time. So I feel like in my drawing, this part needs to be a little bit darker to really separate the face from the neck, but not very much darker. So therefore I'm using a 2B pencil. All right, then this part probably needs to get a lot darker because it's pretty dark on this curve of the chin right here. So I'm gonna outline it and match that outline and fade out and it fades out pretty quickly okay then I'm I'm gonna kind of bend my photograph and I'm gonna check does my chin need to get darker yes all right so I'm gonna go really dark along the bottom kind of fade up a little bit and then along this edge, it's a little bit darker fading up. And then I'm going to compare like right underneath the lip. And yes, it does need to get a little bit darker. So remember, you're putting your darkest values first, but then you're, mo you're moving that graphite around to create some of your mid-tones. So you're going to have to go back and darken your darks because you're trying to match the value in the image. And remember, it will look fairly dark until you put on the hair and the eyes, etc. All right, so I like to do a little bit at a time. That way I'm just uh, refining as I go. I'm going to smudge that back in. Trying to keep clean edges. All right, then I'm gonna kind of fade over to mess up the value map a little bit. And then I look for, are there any subtle little details that I missed? Well, I would say like right here, it kind of fades up a little bit more. So I'm just gonna use whatever's on my blender to fade up a little bit more. I would say like right here, there's an indentation because his skin is stretching. And then over here, it should be a little bit darker to make it look like it's skin that's stretching. 
and that kind of connects. So I'm just going to use whatever's on my blender and kind of paint the graphite on there. And go a little bit darker there. All right, then on this side, I would definitely have to add more. And that crease needs to get darker. So then I would refine, I would focus on that side and refine. All right. So for lighter values, so before I move on, I'm like, okay, I'm done with this area. I'm going to look for where does the skin kind of curve outward. So looking at areas where his skin is kind of protruding or sticking out. Like right here, there's a subtle highlight. Like right here. And I'm going to check this part here. I'm also going to look at like this part under the nose, this lighter part above the lips, and the top of his cheeks. So in my view, sorry, this screen is not fabulous, but in my view, like right along here, it's lighter because it's the top of his cheekbone. All right, so with the kneaded eraser, I'm going to just kind of blot out. So I'm kind of flattening it and making it like a little cone shape, I guess. And I'm flattening out and I'm going to pull that along the top of his cheekbone. And if you have glasses, I'm like pretending they're not there. Oh, you can barely see that. I can see it. That's like a big difference for me. All right, then on a clean side of the big blender. So remember, I'm keeping one end of the big blender for like darker value. And I use one end to kind of like, or one side to smudge away like next to the highlights. I'm just going to kind of smudge away the edge so that it's a smooth transition. All right, then looking at where his skin is curving right here. So I'm going to adjust the kneaded eraser until like a little nub that I can draw with. And so I'm going to draw back in. The highlight along there, but I feel like that's a little bit too extreme. So I'm going to go back over it and make it more subtle with a blender. Okay, then I'm checking area by area. You see, it's a little bit of a highlight on the top of the chin. And I'm going to kind of blend over that a little bit. So I'm checking piece by piece. All right, so then like under his nose. There's like a little bit of a lighter area where the skin is stretching and above the lips. So then I can pinch it and make it smaller. So remember you want to sanitize your hands. And if you didn't, when you walked in, you should sanitize before you touch these because you and another person are sharing. Okay, so it's a little bit lighter by his lips, and then I'm going to fade out by blotting. It's slightly lighter on this side above his lips. And then I'm going to use, well, I'm going to clean off my medium blender, like on my newspaper. Kind of twist, clean it off. Then I can use really light pressure to go back and smudge the edges. All right, so once you get the skin on there, then you need to kind of analyze piece by piece, area by area, and your grid comes off, and so you take the tape off, put it in the box. That way you can easily bend it, like right above. So that tells me like, okay, right here I need to go darker. It fades out here. I have a little bit of reflected light I have to erase out with my kneaded eraser. And I would kind of blend over this area. And then on this part of the cheek, I would use that kneaded eraser to kind of blot back out. So you're bringing back the structure of the face with the kneaded eraser. And then your kneaded erasers are returned at the end of class. And they are self-cleaning. You just stretch them and then they clean themselves. And you can adjust for, I mean, if I'm working in a tiny area, which we will tomorrow, you can pinch it and make it tiny. If I'm working in a bigger area, I kind of make it kind of flat like a finger. That's like an eraser. So you can adjust the size according to what little part you need to work on. All right.